In this video, we're going to go over the 2006 final exam for Math 104 and Math 184 at UBC. The exam, this exam contains of two parts. One part is short answer problems. Uh, each of them worth three points. And they are relatively easy questions. Uh, let's do part one first. The first question is saying, for what values of C, this function is always continuous? A function is always continuous when lim of the function and value of the function at all points are the same. The only point that we are worried about in this question is x equals negative 2, because if it is less than negative 2 or more than negative 2, we use the, uh, this uh, simplified version of this function and we have no problem. Uh, so c, which is the value at x equals negative 2, must be this equal to this limit. If I reduce the fraction, I have x minus 5 as the reduced function. Therefore, lim of x minus 5, x approaching negative 2, and c must be the same meaning C must be negative 7. Part B. Find this limit. By looking at this function, you find out lim of this function as t approaching 0 from negative side does not exist. As you see here at the bottom of this fraction, t must be greater than zero in this question. So if t approaches uh, from negative side, the limit does not exist. When the left side limit does not exist, the limit itself does not exist. I have to remind you, the limit of a function at the point exists if right side limit, left side limit both exist and they are the same. Part C, find this limit. It's a simple fraction. If you plug in zero, you get zero over zero. It is in determinate form. You expand the numerator of the function. You expand the denominator of the function. nine and nine cross out, 25 and 25 cross out. If you factor h from top and bottom, you have h times h plus six over h times h minus 10. As h approaching zero, this limit would be negative six over 10, which is negative two over five. So in order to find the limit, you, you usually plug in the number. If you get the number that is the limit, if you get zero over zero, then you reduce the fraction and plug in the number again. So part D is a business related question about compound continuously, compounded continuously at rate of 6%. You're looking for uh, time that your money triples. Uh, the formula is A equals P0 e to the power of RT. As you know, P0 is the original amount of money, R is the rate, T is time, and A is the future value of your investment. So P O e to the power of 0 0.06 T, 3 P O, triple, you reduce both sides by PO, you get e to the power of 0 0.06t equals 3, meaning 0 0.06t equals line of 3. Therefore, t is line of 3 over 0 0.06, which is approximately 18.3 years. Bx equals b if and only if x is line of b is the formula that I used. Part E, 
at what point on the graph of the function is the tangent line parallel to this line. The slope of this line is 3, therefore we find the derivative of the function which is 2x plus 1, then if we make it equal to 3, we find x equals 1, plug 1 into the original function y would be 9 over 4. Therefore, at 1 and 9 over 4, the tangent line is parallel to y equals 3x plus 1. Very simple question. The next one, part f, for what x does the graph of this have slope 0? Slope 0 means derivative 0. Derivative of the function is 3e to the power of 3x minus 2e minus 2x. If you set this to 0, you come up with a, an exponential equation which is 3e3x minus 2e minus 2x equals 0. Multiply both sides of this equation by e to the power of 2x, then you have 3e to the power of 5x minus 2, 0, e to the power of 5x equals 2 over 3. Again, 5x would be line of 2 over 3. x is 1 over 5, line of 2 over 3. Next question is finding the derivative when x is 1 over root 2. Sine inverse of 1 over root 2 is pi over 4. And derivative of sine inverse of u, assuming u is a function of x, is u prime over 1 minus u2. So the derivative is minus 2 sine inverse of x to the power of negative 3 times 1 over 1 minus x2. Plug in 1 over 2, 1 over root 2, then you have minus 2 sine inverse of 1 over root 2 to the power of 3 times 1 over 1 over 2. 1 over root 2 to the power of 2 is 1 over 2. If you simplify this fraction, you get root 2. And this is pi over 4. Therefore, f prime of 1 over root 2 is minus 2 times pi over 4 to the power of 3 times root 2. The next question, part h. A function g is given in terms of function f f of 0 and f prime of 0 are given and we are looking for the equation of tangent line to the graph of g of x at x equals 0. If u is a function of x, derivative of the square root of u is u prime over 2 square root of u. We find g of 0 which is 1 plus 3 f of 0 it is 2 because f of 0 is given in the question 1. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. Then we find g prime of x, which is 3 f prime of x over 2 square root of 1 plus 3 f of x. We find the slope, which is g prime of 0. You get 3 f prime of 0, 3 times 4 divided by 2 times square root of 4. Simplifying this, 12 divided by 2, 4. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. One, uh, y1 is 2, 3 times x minus 0. Therefore, y equals 3x plus 2 is the equation of tangent line to the graph of g of x at the given point. Next question, part i, y is a function implicitly defined by the given equation, find d by dx in terms of x and y, it's implicit differentiation. Derivative of y is d by dx, 
derivative of line of y plus 3 is 1 over y plus 3 times d by dx equals 2x. I took the derivative from both sides. Factor d by dx, you have 1 plus 1 over y plus 3 equals 2x. A little bit calculation here, which is y plus 4 over y plus 3. Therefore, d by dx would be 2x times y plus 3 over y plus 4. Cross multiplication isolated for d by dx. Very straightforward. The only thing here is derivative of line of u, if u is a function of x, is u prime over u as u. Part j, for what values of x is this function increasing? We find the derivative of a function, we apply quotient rule, if prime of x is 1 over x plus 1 times x plus 1, derivative of numerator times denominator, minus derivative of denominator times numerator, 1 plus n of x divided by x plus 1. If you reduce the fraction, you see 1 and 1 get cancelled, and you simplify it. the derivative, you have this. Set the derivative 0. Uh, fraction 0 means denominator is 0. By solving this simple logarithmic equation, you have x plus 1 equals 1, x 0. So we draw the sign chart for derivative of the function. x starts from negative 1 because log of negative does not exist. At 0, it is 0 to positive infinity. Plugging a number more than 0, I pick e minus 1. And I see it is negative, positive. Therefore, function is increasing, decreasing, meaning for x between negative 1 and 0, f of x equals 1 plus line of x plus 1 over x plus 1 is increasing. Next section, long answer questions. Uh, the first part, the question number two, is using definition of derivative to find the derivative of this function. A prime of x equals lima f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h as h approaching 0. Instead of divided by h, in this case, I say 1 over h to avoid complex calculation f of x plus h is x plus h over 1 minus 3x minus 3h. f of x is x plus h. Take the common denominator here and simplify it. If I take the common denominator, uh, I have to multiply x plus h by 1 plus 3x minus x times 1 minus 3x minus 3h. Here I get x plus h plus 3x2 plus 3xh minus x minus 3x2 minus 3xh. By simplifying this, I have h. Therefore, this fraction can be written as 1 over h times h over 1 minus 3x minus 3h times 1 plus 3x. Here, I basically took the common denominator calculation. h and h cross out. Instead of h with 0, then you have 1 over 1 minus 3x to the power of 2. There is a correction here. This should be 1 minus 3x as original function is 1 minus 3x. And here we have 1 minus 3x as well. Question number 3. Uh, restaurant charges $7 for appetizer and they have 60 clients. So when price is 6, 
five dollars they have 60 clients and then when it is I'm sorry seven dollars and when it is five dollars they have 66 uh, assume that the demand Q is a linear function by having these two points we find the slope and we see a slope is negative three we write the equation of the line passing through these two we'll see the Q the demand uh, the quantity is minus 3p plus 81 now we are looking for profit function profit as a function of price is PQ minus cost function P times minus 3p plus 1 cost per unit is 3 quantity is 3p plus 81 simplifying this function you have minus 3p2 plus 81 and 9 plus 90p and minus 243 so this is the profit function now I have to take the derivative of this function and find the maximum profit profit is minus 6p plus 90p set it to zero you have P equals 90 divided by 6 which is 15 and in order to make sure that this gives you the maximum you say P starts from 0 15 and after 15 uh, before this is going up then goes down so profit is maximum when P is 15 The next question is a curve sketching. Find the interval or intervals in which f of x is increasing. Increasing, we find the prime of x, which is 2 times x2 plus 1 minus 2x times 2x over x2 plus 1 to the power of 2. If you simplify this, you get 2 minus 4x. 2 minus 2x2 divided by x2 plus 1 to the power of 2. Now we have to draw the sign chart for the derivative to find out when it is increasing and when it is decreasing. So x, f prime of x at negative 1 and 1 it is 0. Derivative equal to 0 means numerator of the derivative is 0. That means this part zero. By solving this equation, you get x plus minus one. Then you plug in the number. A number more than one makes it negative, positive and negative, decreasing, increasing and decreasing. Interval of increase means x between negative one and one, it is increasing. The interval in which the function is concave up. We need second derivative. You use quotient rule on the first derivative you find the second derivative if you do the calculation and simplify this would be the second derivative of the function uh, now what you do is draw the sign chart for second derivative at negative 1 and 1 uh, at negative root 3 0 and root 3 second derivative is 0 then you have positive negative positive and negative concave down concave up concave down and concave up therefore it is concave up when x is between negative root 3 and 0 or x more than root 3. Sketch the graph of the function indicating the x coordinate of any point of inflection maximum minimum obviously this point is local max local mean or the other way around local mean local max 
and you have three points of inflection at these three points. Okay. There is no vertical asymptote because the denominator of the fraction has no root. Y equals zero is horizontal asymptote. If you plug negative one into the original function, you get negative one. You plug one, you get one. You plug zero, you get zero. You plug root three, you get two root three over four, which is root three over two, negative root three over two. Uh, corresponding y values for this point and positive is here so these are the actual point of inflections root 3 is given 1.7 so we just plot these points 1 and 1 is the maximum and then one, negative one and negative one is the minimum. Root three, which is one of 1.7, and root three over two, which is approximately 0 0.85. 0 0.85 is the point of inflection. Let's say this is 0 0.85. You have the same thing here. So, uh, as I said, y equals zero is horizontal asymptote of the function. If you join these points, you have the graph of these functions. This function. Uh, again, the function does not have any vertical asymptote. Next question. A carpenter has been asked to build an open box square base. It's a square base. And it has it's open top. Let's assume this is y. Again, it is a square base. That's why I used x and x. Uh, the sides of the box will cost two dollars per square feet meter to build. You have four sides. Four x y is the area times two eight x y. Again, you have four sides. The area of each of them is x, y square meter. It's $2, 4 x, y times two is eight x, y. And the bottom is $5. The area of the bottom is x2 times five. And you have a budget, which is $60. So with this budget, you want to find the dimension that maximizes the volume of the box. Okay, this is a function of two variables. We find y from this equation, which is 60 minus 8xy divided by 5x2. Uh, let me, we are looking for y, 8xy equals 60 minus 5x2, this is correct. Y equals 60 minus 5x2 divided by 8x. Now volume is x2y, I replace y with this, then volume would be 60 minus 5x2 times x, which is 60x minus 5x3. I want to find the maximum of this function. Obviously x is greater than zero and there is a limitation on y too, but it is not related to the question. I'm looking for the maximum of the volume. I find the derivative of the volume as a function of x. It is 60 minus 15 x2. If you set it to zero, you get x equals plus minus two, but if x starts from zero, so x is 0, 2, then v prime of x is positive and negative, meaning x equals 2 makes this maximum. If you plug 
two into the original, uh, into the, this constraint, you find the value of y. y would be 60 minus 5 times 4, 20, divided by 16, which is 40 divided by 16, which is, if you reduce it by 8, you come up with 2.5. So the dimension are x equals 2 and 2.5. That means 2, 2, and 2.5 gives you the maximum volume of the box with this budget constraint. Next question. The price is given. The price P and demand Q for a product are related by this equation. If the price is increasing at the rate of $2 per month, DPDT equals 2. When price is 30, plug in 30 for price and find Q. Then 2Q2 equals 200. Q is going to be 10. The Q is actually plus minus 10, but minus is not acceptable. Find the rate of uh, change of revenue per month. We have P2 plus 2Q2 equals 1100. We take the derivative of both sides of this function with respect to T. We have 2P dp dt plus 2Q dq dt equals 0. Now we plug in the numbers P, Q, and dp dt. 2 times 30 times 2 plus 2 times Q, which is 10, times dq dt equals 0. Therefore, dq dt would be, uh, I reduce it by 2, I have 60 divided by 10 minus 6, and it is quantity demand per month. Thank you.